So in the last episode, we built this little lazy river with our riverboat just uh, going around our Gariel habitat. And uh, I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, we did make a couple of mistakes though. And by we, I mean, I made some very strange blunders, like just not having an exit to this ride. So no one can really use it because they can't escape. Um, which wasn't the plan. Okay, so I've just managed to delete the exit that's here and I had to do that in a bit of an odd way. I'm not sure whether someone found a better way or not, but I basically just got rid of the whole station by clicking a different um, exit point, which got rid of the exit and then going back to the one that we had where people exit on the same side. Um, and now I'm just gonna add one in again by clicking uh, the general button and then clicking place or move exit. I'm going to add the exit on this side. Now we can build a nice path that's going to let our guests escape from, <laughs> from this ride. And for the path we're going to use, I'm going to use this natural curb, uh, this natural path that we have, because it's got um, wooden fences. And I think it's the only one that has like a bit more of a sustainable fence, um, which annoyingly isn't the same as the queue path. And I don't think we can use queue paths um, for this because it just makes another queue. Okay, now we've connected a path. It does go through a tree. Um, so just gonna shift that tree over very slightly. Um, but then uh, we've got quite a nice little path area here so they can actually get out. And I think I'm gonna make it be short grass on this very small area um, so that we don't have grass poking through the ground, which might be a little bit uncomfortable. There we go. So that has fixed that problem. Annoyingly, the ground here meant we had to put in a little bridge, but I don't think it's that bad. And now the ride is actually usable. We can open it up. So celebrations are due. The second opening of this ride. How great is that? <laughs> um, we also didn't actually decorate the staff area that we have, which I know is something I said previously I would do. So this very bland staff area over here, and I think that deserves some TLC. Another thing I noticed was that this tree completely blocks that solar panel. So I think I'm going to find which one. So it's a beech tree. If I go on nature and type in beech, can we just get a smaller beech tree? That's what I'm wondering. Like maybe that one is a better fit um, to come in here. We can add a beech tree there and the solar panel still has a reasonable amount of sun um, from the other side when the sun actually comes around. Um, it's as much as we can do. You wouldn't really have solar panels like this uh, <laughs> if you're building a nice area with loads of K-Pox and everything to hide the hide the sun on, on this massive tree canopy. But seeing as the game doesn't allow you to do like electric cabling from solar panels to other areas and everything has to be like within the radius, um, that's kind of the best we have because this has to be close enough to all of these uh, exhibit, uh, what they call display boards so that you can actually see what animals are in here. So that's kind of something where we've got to work with the game. We've got to work with what we've got. <laughs> as far as this staff area, I think it just needs a little bit of nature to bring it alive. And we could maybe even put in a few water, small water areas over here um, just to make this a bit more of a natural area.
Okay, so we've quite densely populated this area now with the with vegetation and I think it looks so much better now that we've got some of that in there. And seeing as these guys are right next to our Amma Leopard habitat, I think I'm just going to put a couple of these decorations on. Um, that just ha just give a little nod to that and just add a bit of fun, really, if nothing else, to this area. Um, it doesn't need anything special, but I think that's a little bit a little bit of something interesting. And the plants I've used are essentially all tropical plants, and they're not just from North America. Like I know that this zoo is technically in North America, but I wanted to use all the tropical plants because it gives much better variety, and that's what I plan to do around the rest of the zoo as well. Um, is around the outside is to use these tropical plants and kind of densely populate it so we've got a bit of a forest going on around around our zoo which I think will be quite nice but today we are moving away from this side of the zoo and everything we've just done here and we're going back to our African side of the zoo back to see look there he is there he is Mr. Pale Howard standing in a tree I don't know if he's K-I-S-S-I-N-G-ing because I can't see any other giraffes. Oh, there they are. There's some here. Oh, he's had a baby boy as well. And we got Beanstalk. And I think, yeah, I think the other one died. I think it was Pippi Longstocking was a little bit older and she has passed away. But we've still got a couple in here and they're having a great time. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Maybe I spoke too soon. Pippi Longstocking. There you go. She's just an old gal, but she's hanging in there. So that's what we want to hear. <laughs> uh, she's all okay. And we've got our bonobos here, which are just having the best time playing with boxes. Just slapping, slapping bo cardboard boxes around. Oh, my goodness. Well, I thought they liked the boxes anyway. They don't seem to be... <laughs> I don't seem to be enjoying them in the way that I would, though I don't know what I'd do with a cardboard box. Oh, my goodness. Look, there's a little baby in here as well. A little bubba. Oh... That is a cute little, a little wine. Oh, look at you. Look at our zoo. They're breeding. It's all going well. I love it. <laughs> now we've got some babies in here. That brings a bit more life into this side of the zoo. And the plan is to continue that. And I want to have a bit of a, like an ape area around here. Um, so I'm going to carry that on with today's episode. And what we're going to be doing, even though it's miserable weather right now, and I don't know if it's just because of the time, um, which, it just doesn't feel like the weather to make, you know, fun announcements, but it is going to be fun. We are going to get the Western Lowland Gorilla. And these, oh no, who's died? Oh no, Theo's died. Oh, you'll be missed. Oh, that's very sad. Oh, actually, that reminds me of one thing. This is completely unrelated, but somehow it, it reminded me uh, that we don't have, I think, well, the gyrals we got may be related uh, because we bought them at the same time from the same zoo. Ah, that is a problem. Okay, so all of the females in here are the sisters of our very um, massive and quite scary male gyrals that we got in the last episode. So we're unfortunately gonna have to release him into the wild which we're gonna do for 149 credits. That's not the worst thing. And then we are gonna first have to get a male Gariel and add him back into this habitat. So let's go with this really solid male here. Um, 560 credits and we'll send him to quarantine all the way on the other side of the zoo. Which I don't think has anyone in it at the minute. Let's just play and have a look. No, it's got no one in it. So that's good. <laughs> um, it's something to be careful about when we're buying animals is that they're not from the same zoo in franchise mode, which I always forget because I play quite a lot in challenge mode as well. And it's all fine. It's all frontier at that point. But with franchise, they're from different zoos. So, well, they could be from the same zoo. So you have to kind of be careful. There's a really great um, gorilla male here. Um, so I'm considering getting him. Let's have a look at what the requirements are for the Western Lowland Gorillas. They're critically endangered. That's so sad. Like, look how look how awesome they are. Um, okay, so they need three to six, and it's one male because it's a harem, isn't it, that they have. Um, and it's going to be six males that say they have like four babies as well at the same time. They don't need that much space. Um, they need a reasonable amount of climbing area, but that's easy to do. 
and they need grade three climb proof five meters. Okay, or you can use water because they can't swim. Um, I think we're going to go with grade three climb proof because that is the continuation of our current uh, wooden logs um, with some... They are climbable. If you put climb resistant barriers on the top, they're not. So that's fine. That's what we're going to do. Oh, and butter's died. Oh, they're already boxed up. Are there any other? Oh, we've got a baby in here. Well, we need to get another Malayan taper as well. So let's let's grab the taper first. Malayan taper. Grab a new male. Oh, it's going to be this one. And then send them to the zoo. They're going to go to quarantine as well. And now we're going to get our gorillas. <laughs> so, Western Lowland Gorilla. We've got a couple of males here. They are massively different in price. And I'm not sure whether the quality is really going to matter for our, for our purposes. So I'm actually tempted to get the cheaper male, um, even though he's not quite as good. Uh, because this one's incredible, but yeah. No, I think we're going to get the male. Um, oh, I'm going to pause the game because our penguins are about to inbreed, which the chances of that actually even happening are ridiculously low because <laughs> there are so many penguins. Um, let's get this slightly cheaper. Oh, he's 17 years old. That's the other thing we didn't check. Oh, that could have been really bad. How long do you guys live? 41. Okay. 41 years. I am tempted just to go with the expensive male in that case. Um, just need to check they're not from the same zoo. Okay, we're going to get these two females. Oh, and we've just had another male pop in. Oh, he's kind of the best of both worlds. Okay, we're going to get this new male. That's perfect. Um, are they from the same zoo? No. Okay, let's grab him. And now we've got three three gorillas. I'm going to send them all to quarantine. And that may be enough. I'm just going to check one more time what the requirements were. So it's three to six. So three is okay. Now, why are you inbreeding when there are this many penguins around you? I, I There's more in here as well. Why, guys? Why? <laughs> I'm going to release you to the wild uh, because you can't control yourselves. Uh, you're going to go as well. There's way too many penguins in here. You can just go to because you are around. I'm just going to grab some of the adults and release them. Way too many animals. Way too many penguins. I'm just going to do another little bit of a batch release on these penguins to, to get rid of a number of them. Okay, let's release 20 penguins for over a thousand credits. That's pretty good. That takes the feeding cost down quite a way. And we've still got quite a few in here. I'm just going to release a few more. I'm going to release another nine for 620. There we go. That, that's taking the numbers down. And a lot of these are babies, but they are going to grow up. And once they've grown up, they're going to do exactly the same things. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's okay. There's not that many adults, but we don't need there to be because we've got a lot of infants right now. Um, oh, our Gariel's passed their, their quarantine and they can be sent to Gariel Island over here which hasn't been named. Okay, so Habitat 61. That's an incredibly boring name. It's going to be called... I'm going to call it Gariel Island. <laughs> um, so that's good. And then it's just our taper that needs to pass quarantine and now our gorillas as well. So the plan for the gorillas is to put them somewhere over here. Now I know that you guys have said this would be perfect for like a pride rock habitat. And I think I am gonna do that. So I'm gonna leave this for the lions um, that we will get later in this series. And I think I'm gonna try and put the apes around here. So this might be the ideal spot for a gorilla habitat right here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of path editing to define the, uh, the boundary of where I want this habitat. Okay, quite a large defined area now. Now the plan for this is to do similar to kind of what we did with the pygmy hippos. I want to get some more domes in and I'm going to build them again like I did with the pygmy habitat from scratch so we can get a different dome in this area. And I want to build a bit of like a guest dome that intersects with the, uh, the gorilla's dome. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I think we should be okay in pulling it off. 
and hopefully it'll turn out all right. Now to make a dome in Planet Zoo, the first thing you need to do is to build a one single section of wall that you are happy with, and that is gonna be important later. So make sure you're happy with this section of wall. Okay, so now we've created kind of an interesting like one wall piece. Um, now we can uh, create the roof for that. And again, I'm going to use wooden. I'm trying to keep this one very sustainable. So I'm going to use like mostly wooden pieces for this. Uh, but I'm going to make one roof piece across here. Okay, so I've used uh, one like slanted wooden uh, roof piece and then three of the like the wooden slatted like flat ones. Um, so what we can do now is we can select all of this and then control D and then hit Z twice to flip it the whole way around and join these up. So now we can, now this is all kind of one piece. We can exit the group um, and we can hit control X and then hit X again and then we can copy them. I'm going to turn angle snap off on this because uh, it's not going to quite line up. Um, and then we can manually slot these together like so. Now on this one, I've not put any windows on it and that's for a very specific reason. But normally you would want to like leave some gaps so there's some light like that can naturally come through. And there we have it, a massive wooden dome, which is what we were after with quite a unique pattern around the side. Now, uh, this should all be, if we select it, uh, this is 13 groups. Um, we can move them all together though, and then uh, put it where we actually want it. And I think we want this. Uh, I think we want to change where the, the guests are going to be queued up. And I think this, this road here is going to be our main kind of access point. So I want to put the dome about here and then I'm going to delete some of the sections of this so that only like it, it falls halfway through the uh, the gorilla's habitat and I'm actually to keep it all in one theme I'm gonna create a very similar wall section um, I might actually just duplicate this and then edit it down so it's not quite as fancy to be the other side of the habitat Okay, and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move this dome so it intersects with the one we have already. And this is where it's going to get slightly messy. I actually don't want it quite there. I want to intersect it a bit more in the center. I think about there should be good. And now we need to delete this, uh, this side here to have a bit more of an entrance. Okay, so what we've done now is create like a bit of an inside dome and it's got the barriers here. So the plan is obviously then for the gorillas to come in this section and the guests to get a bit of like an inside close up look at them. 
um, and it's somewhat of a sheltered area for the gorillas um, because when these meshes kind of overlap they form a bit of this weird uh, roof which I didn't really realize they would but I kind of like it now that it's there it's like a uh, it's, it's like a weird pattern that I wouldn't have predicted otherwise but it kind of works <laughs> Uh, so it's a mostly solid roof, uh, but what we need to do obviously is create an entrance for them because they can't get in as it is. So I'm just going to take out these bottom layers here. Okay, so we've built a bit of a wooden habitat around the outside now, and now I'm just going to connect up the uh, the barrier to uh, to the rest of this habitat on the inside of the dome. And I'm going to try and do it within the confines of the dome if I can, so it can't be seen. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. It was a bit finicky, but I think I've managed to do it and I'm reasonably happy with it. There's only one section that you can kind of see and that's this one here that kind of sticks through, but I don't think it's gonna to be too bad. And especially once we pull this barrier all the way up, um, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be mostly fine because it is just glass at the end of the day. And I think we're going to put climb proofing on both sides, uh, which we're going to have to do, which slightly gets in the way of the design, but um, it is a necessary thing. And I don't think it's that bad that you can kind of see some of it. Um, so I don't dislike it that much. I think it's it's going to be hard. It's always hard whenever you work with circles in Planet Zoo, to be honest, to, uh, to get everything to be perfectly symmetrical. Although I realize that this could probably do with losing this panel to make it a bit more symmetrical. Um, and then we need to do the same here with deleting these areas. And now they've got an, a little area in here. They've got two little areas. I think we're probably going to put some food or something in here so they get up and close for the, for this section. And then, uh, yeah, we can put some, some windows around the outside of the habitat as well to give people a chance to look in. I think we'll probably do a few windows at a time with one-way glass. Um, I don't really know whether the gorillas are particularly scared of the humans. Um, we can have a look at that. I don't know if they're shy around humans or not, but I'm not going to make the whole side one-way glass because I don't want guests to, to uh, stack up everywhere. I think I might do four and four, leave a small gap, and then do the same on this side as well. Okay, so now we've got our barriers in place. They're over five meters high and they are climb proof. We need to hit play to allow our gorillas to actually go through quarantine and then we can put them in here and see if they can uh, climb out. I don't think they will be because I don't, we've still got the climb proofing on here and that's kind of the intention is that they, they won't be able to climb this. I don't think they can in the game. Um, I suppose from a realism element, they could probably get on the top and then jump out, though that's quite a considerable fall and this would be the only area they can reasonably climb down and it's still pretty pretty sheer um so i'm gonna say that the climbing air it for the for the uh like the law of this habitat um we've got climb proof material on here as well um like this would actually in real you know realistically this whole dome would have climb proofing on the top which isn't something we can really put in at least not very easily um in the game so that's what we're going with. <laughs> while we wait for our gorillas to all pass quarantine, I can see that our tape is past quarantine, but while we wait for the gorillas, we can um, install some of the uh, habitat enrichment items. And it's Western Lowland. This has probably got it, Gore. I think that's probably close enough that they know what we mean. Um, we could have a forage box in here. That would be cool. And then I think maybe we put some two frozen, uh, frozen blocks of fruit as well. And that's quite a lot of food for them to come in for. Um, we could also then have their bedding here and have this be a bit of a shelter area. 
There you go. So they got a bit of bedding. Um, I might actually uh, put in another piece there to make it a bit of a less regimented shape. Um, and then we've got some food enrichment. And we are going to have to change the terrain, but I'm going to wait until they're, uh, they're in before I do that. And it's a good thing we put all this stuff in because the guests would be absolutely drenched right now, as would the gorillas. Um, so I'm glad that this habitat has some weather protection. Oh no, I'm going to pause because our horses are about to inbreed. That's not a good thing. Our spirit's still going. He, he, he's got his kids in here. I'm going to release this one into the wild. 34 credits. Look how cute they are though, these little horses. Yeah, he's angry now. Taking them out. <laughs> got a little baby in here, not enjoying the rain, but they've got a nice big shelter. Um, I am hoping that the, the one we've just put in, this nice big... Uh, shelter for the gorillas is sufficient for their hard shelter as well but we're going to give them climbing as and, and that often can serve as, as hard shelter too so I'll make sure I put some hard shelter elements in for them too um, and I think we're probably good to put them all in now we've had uh, we've got the Malayan taper needs to go into their habitat which I believe is just here buffalo and tapers oh no Carol's died our proboscis monkey where are you, Carol? Oh, you've already been taken out. Look at our elephants. I get distracted so easily. <laughs> Look at the baby. Look at Ellie swim with Nelly. That's with her mom. How cute is that? She's swimming with her mom. We're playing in the water in the rain. Anyway, back to the gorillas. They've all passed quarantine. So I'm gonna grab all three of them and move them over here. Oh, I can't do that because there's no habitat door. That's kind of an important part of this. <laughs> so we need to think about where our keeper facilities are. We've got some here, but I believe that's just, oh, I've got some here, sorry, which are serving this area and some, I don't think this is a keeper hut. I think the others around here are fed from one here. So we're gonna need a new uh, staff facilities area. And I imagine it's going to go where this solar panel is. So I'm going to try and keep the, the habitat gate close to that if I can. And maybe install one uh, right here. Yeah, I, I never like the look of it with the uh, <laughs> with the door when the, when the uh, barrier is really high. It just looks a bit weird to me, but they can at least be put in the habitat now. Um, so let's select all of them. And let's move them all the way across the zoo into habitat 62 i didn't even i didn't mean for that to rhyme but it is what it is western lowland gorillas i think i'm spelling gorilla right am i spelling it right yes i am okay so i'm going to delete that alert now because they're all being sent across and our caretakers are going to bring them in and they'll use this door to do so they are going to need a few things so we know that they're going to need water um, and we can see we've got a water treatment uh, facility right here, which I think, is it broken? No, it was shown up as black, which is weird. Perhaps the power's broken. Ah, yes, they are a bit broken, but that's fine. They will soon be operational. It's because our mechanics did so much uh, mechanic research uh, recently that they've just neglected all their chores, uh, but that's fine. Let's just, we need to make sure it's within this area in order to be clean. So I think what we could do is have a nice, yeah, tell me about it, uh, power source failed. Um, we can have a nice area at the back here on this side of the habitat where we have our water. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. And let's have a look at where these guys are from. So they're from tropical and Africa. So we can quite easily determine what kind of rocks we're gonna need, which is tropical and continent Africa, <laughs> um, which means we're basically gonna be using the tropical and the mossy rocks as we always do. And I love putting some rocks in these areas. Oh no, who's died? Oh, Luna. Luna, bless you. That's our first doll to go, I think. But look at that little pack, having a great time. That little sprinkler. I think they're just being put into the zoo now. <gasps> look at them. Look at you, you inquisitive being. So I think this is one of the females. And then here's our other female and our massive male. <laughs> look at him. Oh, okay, I didn't mean to, all right. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at whether you can break out or not, because that's a significant issue if you can. Heat map, habitat, click on you. 
And you can't. You can access everywhere except the water, but we only need them to drink from there. Can you get inside this area? You can, and you can reach all of the, uh, the enrichment, which is perfect. So this is a suitable habitat for them. It's also way bigger than it needs to be, but we are going to need to put in some climbing area, which we're definitely going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint the terrain so it matches what they need, and I'm going to finish off our little water area. And there we have a little waterfall, which I think is really cute. I love putting waterfalls on here. And the habitat is also appropriate for them now, which is exactly what we need. So they should be fairly happy with this now, apart from the uh, the plants and obviously the climbing area, which is giving them some, some welfare um, issues. Now, they do need some food as well. And we put in some of the habitat food, but I think we should also put in They've got another, they've got a large roller feeder and I I'm tempted to put this over on this side of the habitat. So they've got food in a couple of different locations and the tree forager. So if you give them a couple of bits of, maybe you should face it like this. Um, if you give them a couple of bits of food enrichment, then um, they should, they've got a reasonable amount over here and then they've got the rest in that other area. And we can also throw in a block of ice around here too. Now, before we place the rest of the enrichment, I think I'm gonna build some climbing areas for them. Um, these are the ones they can use, and we've got some shelters here, which are very useful as well. So I think I'm gonna use these in combination and try and come up with a bit of a climbing area for them. Okay, that is quite a lot of climbing enrichment we've just put in. I'm going to click play and see what they can access again. If I click on habitat, they can access most of it, which is really good. It's a shame they can't seem to get on these areas, which, oh no, I think they can. The green line means they can walk on it, but it's not like, they can just walk like in a straight line across the things, I think, which is good. They've got 800 meters, which is 10 times as much climbing space as they need. So I'm super happy about that. And I kind of like how it's shaping up this habitat. Um, the only thing is we haven't assigned it to our work zone. So we do need to add it in uh, to the work zone. We need to create a new work zone for this one. But what I'm going to do for this episode is just do um, Africa middle and add it in here and then we're going to in the next episode we will build a new staff area and we'll move it over into that 
Oh, and I didn't add it to the zoo work zone. So now everything should be working. We could have a C and see if there are any more. Uh, wow, there's some albino, albino, albino ones at the minute. There's another female. I'm going to grab a third female and then send her to quarantine. And then we'll at least have four gorillas in the zoo, which is the, the male and then three females. And that's a pretty good start for breeding, I think. Uh, but yeah, look how massive this area is for them. Look at them having a good time. I mean, they're not the most energetic, are they, of, uh, of all the animals we have, but they are cute. And they're very, very cool to have in the zoo. I'm hoping they're one of our most, uh, like, beloved animals now for the guests. I always feel like the males are, like, just so grumpy and just always on guard looking for other males that they, like, forget to enjoy themselves. <laughs> oh, look, they've climbed up. And the last female is just exploring this little climbing area we made over here. I hope soon they're going to um, they're going to explore the massive dome area we've created, because I think this is going to be a really cool viewing experience for the guests to uh, to come in and you can see them from there. I think that's a really uh, fun little experience. Um, we do need to add some education in though, so I'm going to grab a. I think this might be a good point for an animal talk actually. Um, but we're also going to need some habitat boards, education boards. So I'm going to add them to the habitat now. And then if we have a look at our power, we can see which of them require and maybe another, another or one or two solar panels around the habitat. I think this one can be achieved just by moving this over. And we're also going to need some benches and bins around the habitat, so I'm going to put them in too. Okay, so we've just added a lot of benches and seating and bins, both donation and recycling. Oh no, we're about to lose one of our oryx. I'm going to put the uh, call the vet ready for them to pass away. I think the final thing we need to do to this habitat is add a bit of nature, make it look a bit nice. <laughs> Okay, I am quite happy with that and so are the gorillas. So we've got quite a lot of ferns and things in here. Uh, if I click play, you can see our beautiful water floor. I just added some lilies in here and I've uh, got these really nice. I love the tamarinds, which are the really like brightly colored ones, along with the strangler figs that are like a bit of an interesting shape a lot of the time. And uh, you got to top it off with the K-Pox just to, to cover up the whole area. It gives some really good, um, really good tree coverage. Um, it, and that's generally what improves the what the animal's looking for. Like when you look at their nature coverage, um, the plant, the coverage is uh, tree coverage they're looking for, and K-Pox just fill up a massive amount of that, so they're really useful for that. It looks like our last gorilla is ready to be put into the habitat as well, which is awesome. So they're just going to get moved over, and then we've got the whole crew in there, which is exactly what we want. I think we'll probably leave it there for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, please do give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.